Oh, okay, this is about my eighth go at doing this video. I am gonna get it all done in one go without the swearing. There we go. Okay, so following diagrams show the external features of two insects, both are human, ecto. What does ecto mean? Outside. What does parasite mean? Straightforward definition. We need to talk about nutrition and harm. And we've got a head louse, lovely, and a flea. What do you know about fleas? Fleas can jump. Head lice, little legs. With claws, so they crawl and cling on. Ooh, want to scratch. Define ectoparasite. So two bits of it, the ecto and the parasite bit, that's what they're going to want, isn't it? Two marks, ectoparasite. So, this is a parasite that lives on the surface of its host. So that's the ecto bit. Obtaining its nutrition. What was that pink? from its host, causing the host harm. Unlike fleas, head lice normally infest a new host, so going from host to host, only by close contact between individuals. Suggest one reason for that. Okay, so fleas have long legs and can jump head lice I really do want to scratch now only have short legs and crawl yeah. state why these insect species are classified in the same domain and kingdom as humans. So kingdom, why, why are they animals? Why are they in the kingdom animalia? Domain, we're all in the eukarya, along with fungi and plants and protoctists. So same domain because they have eukaryotic cells. Same kingdom because the cells don't have cell walls. And the organisms are multicellular and heterotrophic. So all they're asking is do you know what the domain we're in, do you know the features of Animalia? Okay, so now we've got phylogenetic trees, which always reminds me of whalefish, big nose fish. The question that makes you cry. So we've got phylogenetic tree with co-evolution of different species of lice and their hosts. Dotted lines, so these ones here, represent the parasite host relationship. So that means pedicular shafi infests chimpanzees. Charles Darwin has Pediculus humanus, which is the head louse. Where? I don't know, because he's bald. I suggest his beard, perhaps. And uh, Phytherus pubis, and I think we can all guess where that lives. Um, gorillas have Phytherus gorillii, and monkeys have Pedicinus. So we've got three different genera here, and five different species. Numbers at the branch nodes represent that the estimated time of divergence from a common ancestor in millions of years ago. These times is a molecular clock and that measures the degree of similarity. So remember that sort of idea that as you go forwards in time, the longer you've got, the more mutations build up and 
you get more uh, differences in stuff like DNA and amino acid sequences. So here we've got our parasites. 23 million years ago they set off. Their common ancestor diverges. And 10 million years goes past, they diverge again into the, this group, diverge into head lice and pubic lice. And then 5.6 million years ago, these head off into ones that are specialised for chimpanzees and ones specialised for humans, and these ones split into ones specialised for humans and ones specialised for gorillas. The monkey evolutionary tree starts off 24 million years ago with a split between monkeys and apes. Then we've got 11.8 million years ago, gorillas split off. And then lastly, our closest relative, the chimpanzee, has a common ancestor 6.1 million years ago. And it's always worth sort of talking your way through that. So, describe the evidence that suggests that the common ancestor of gorillas and humans that's uh, this one, was not infested with the pubic louse, Phytherus pubis. So why didn't this ancestor here have this louse? This louse diverged 3.3 million years ago. This divergence was 8.8 .8 million years ago. So we've got, on our timeline, 11.8 million years ago we had a common ancestor for humans and gorillas but then we've got sort of 3.3 million years ago we've got the common ancestor of the lice so they're not there at the same time is the bottom line so describe the evidence pubic lice diverge from their common ancestor three point three million years ago and humans and gorillas eleven point eight million years ago. This means a common ancestor humans and gorillas is not alive at the same time as the common ancestor of the pubic louse. Nice of humans and gorillas. Now effectively that common ancestor has died out by the time this set of lice diverge. Um, again, putting the numbers on means you've referred to the data, always worth a mark. So, last bit. Suggest how DNA analysis could be used. So DNA analysis, what are we looking at here? Base sequences used to measure the degree of genetic similarity between species. So, um, the similarity in the base sequences of DNA be assessed. To reflect similarities in the species. Yay! Table with a hypothetical molecular clock made of data. Insert the value for the time of divergence for 90% genetic similarity. So here this is a pattern spotting thing which I have to say always wants to make me cry. So we've got a 20% 
uh, increase there and a 20% increase there. We've got a 10% decrease. This is 20% up, 10% down. 20% up, 10% down. Half. 10% up. Half of 10. 5. We don't need to put units on or anything. It's in the table heading where it should be. So, out of the human ectoparasite is the disease-carrying body louse. Remember those off the video? Heading underneath the cloth. Body louse attaches its head to clothing. Head louse attaches its eggs to scalp hair. Suggest why they are considered to be the same species. So what do we know about the same species? Same species interbreeds to produce fertile offspring. So if they are the same species, that why they're considered to be, they must be interbreeding to produce fertile offspring. So the two types of louse are able to interbreed to produce fertile offspring. My, I'm pretty much guessing that is correct uh, because if you think about it, head louse attaches eggs to scalp hair but your clothing's kind of made of sheep hair so not too different really.